Hello everyone. Greeting from Business Consulting. So today we are going to learn SAP architecture. So basically we will be seeing a basic overview of SAP and its architecture. The agenda of today's training is we are going to see SAP history why we require SAP, advantage and disadvantage of SAP, SAP architecture, SAP landscape. So what does SAP mean? SAP stand for system, application and product in data processing. So S stand for system, A stand for application and P stand for product. Sometimes it's also known as system application and product in real time data processing. So SAP is a name of a software company and also name of its ERP product. So it's the name of the company as well as the name of the software product which it publish. SAP is number one in the ERP market. It share around 60% of the ERP market in the world. Now SAP system it comprises of a number of fully integrated modules which covers virtually every aspect of the business management. As of 2010, SAP has more than 1,40,000 installation over 25 industry specific business. There are some other rivals of SAP. These are Oracle, Microsoft, JD Edwards, PeopleSoft, Bank, etc. Now, SAP was started in 19. 72 by five former IBM employees in Germany. So original idea to form this company was to provide customer with the ability to interact with a common database for a comprehensive range of application. So initially their vision was a standard application software for real-time data processing and the first client of this company was Imperial Chemical Industry. Now SAP has released its several version of software. So initially it released SAP R1 then SAP R2 then SAP R3. So here R stands for real time. That means real time data processing. And for an example, three stands for three tire. That is three tire client server architecture. The most current release of SAP is SAP Business Suite Seven. So now we are going to see the initial release. That is SAP R1. So SAP R1, this was the first version of SAP flagship enterprise software which was a financial accounting system which was known as SAP R1 that is real time one tire architecture. So this is the first version of SAP software which was launched around 1972 and it is a one tire architecture in which all the three layers that is application layer, presentation layer, database layer all are installed in one system so this is a single tire or a single user application then comes SAP R2 so SAP R2 was mainframe based business application software that was very successful in 1980s and early 1990s 
so after release of SAP R1 there come SAP R2 so in 1979 the second version of SAP R2 was released here in SAP R2 it was a two tier architecture in which three layers presentation layer, application layer and database layer are installed in two separate server so server, server 1 was presentation layer and server 2 was application and database layer as you can see here server 1 is application layer and server 2 is database layer so with the advent of distributed client server computing SAP brought out the client server version of software which was called, called as SAP R3 SAP real time 3 tier architecture which consists of database layer, application layer and presentation layer so this new architecture was very compatible with multiple platform and operating system such as Microsoft Windows, Unix, etc. And SAP R3 was officially launched on 6th of July 1992. So it was the upgraded version of R2. And all the three layers that is presentation layer, application layer and database layer were installed in three different system, three different server. So first server was the presentation, second was application and third was database. So this first server was the client application that is SAP GUI or browser you can say. This was the application server where mostly you used to give the commands what functionality you need to perform and this was the database layer where all the data is stored now this was the difference between R1, R2 and R3 so as you can see that what were the benefits so one tier architecture was very simple it was very cheap and no server was needed same with 2 tier and 3 tier but in 3 tier there was exceptional security it was more faster than 1 tier and 2 tier it was very scalable and flexible now the issue which 1 tier and 2 tier were facing was the poor security and also it was very thick line but R3 has exceptional security and it was thin client but the disadvantage was that it was very complex and very costly now SAP, cons SAP has different modules so basically it is divided into two area that is functional module and technical module so in functional module there come SAP FI that is financial accounting controlling, production planning, quality management, human resource, material management, sales and distribution so all the business functionalities which are there in an enterprise all the all this comes into SAP function module so this is these are all the functional modules which are supported by SAP then there comes the technical module so ABAP which is stand for advanced business application programming this is the language on which the SAP has been written basis now it's known as netware so it's like it is about all server and security business information business warehouse and the new product which has been launched is SAP HANA that is high performance analytic appliance that is it is it's it's SAP has launched its own database in memory database now we will see that what is client 
so from a business standpoint a client can be interpreted as a logical group of companies so all the customization that is configuration and development this all work in sap is performed in a client however the data from both customizing and development may be stored within an individual client or among all the clients in the system now there comes sap landscape so landscape is like a server system or like a layout of the server or some may even call it as a architecture of a server so it's basically divided into three different landscape that is development quality and production so development it is the system or server we can say where consultant do customization write a web code as per user requirement or business requirement quality landscape quality server it's where core team member or different team member test the custom build application and production server is the server where live data of the company is recorded so always remember that the requirement will flow from development to quality and from quality to production and not backward so <coughs> there are various advantage of sap that is flexibility customized solution highly integrated with other modules it's it also provide real time data processing and reporting so there are many advantage but with advantage there come some disadvantage also so one is complexity so it's not easy to implement and maintain sap it's very complex costing so cost of implementation and support is very high so a small scale industry it's very difficult for them to just implement sap they need to invest millions of rupee millions of dollar into it and sometimes it's inflexible as good erp is tightly integrated with functions so sometimes it behave as inflexible so why we need sap what is major reason that we are adopting sap so it improve the performance of a business by consolidating the operation of an entire multi site enterprise into one database one application and one user interface so this was all about sap overview and architecture if you like our video please press the like button please comment please share and please subscribe if you face any query please mail us at businessconsulting007@gmail.com thank you so much